set up a really simple irrigation system in my garden and this is something that I've been wanting to do for a while but I was kind of held back by the fact that I didn't really know what the heck I was doing when it came to irrigation. Everything I kind of looked up online really just confused me and I thought that it was going to be this really complicated, really expensive process. In reality, irrigation is one of those things where it can be as simple or as complicated as you want it to be to meet your needs for your specific garden. And now that I've kind of had a go at it and I've actually realized <laughs> what's involved in irrigation, I've realized that it's actually quite simple. And I wanted to share with you basically what I wish I'd known before I started this whole process. So let's start by looking at some of the reasons you might want to start using irrigation in your own garden. An irrigation system can ensure that you're using water efficiently by delivering water directly to where it's needed, like the roots of the plants, and minimizing water waste from runoff, evaporation, or overspraying. It can also be time saving. An irrigation system can automate the watering process, allowing you to save time and effort compared to hand watering or using a hose, or you could have two systems going at once. Now, irrigation can be as cheap or as expensive or as simple or as complicated as you want it to be. I opted for a relatively simple uh, system because I wanted something that was probably only going to be temporary because I am not really sure if I'm living in this place long term or what the go is at the moment. So I wanted something that wasn't going to be too expensive and something that I could really easily just remove and take with me if I have to move. So in order to set up your own irrigation system, I think that there's really only four main things that you need. So the first one seems pretty obvious, but you're going to need a water source. You're going to need somewhere for the water to come from. And this is most likely going to be an existing tap that you're probably already watering your garden from. So for me, that was going to be the tap. So the tap that my hose is connected to that I have been using to manually water my garden, that was going to be my main water source. From your water source, you'll need to decide if you want to use some splitters or adapters so that you can have multiple sections of your system going at once. And one of the great things about an irrigation system is that it's giving you more flexibility and freedom. So you might want to consider things like timers. Of course, you need to remember that each individual component will need to be connected through the correct connectors for the brands that you are using. For me, I wanted to basically split the hose into two so that I could kind of have two things going at once. I also wanted a timer. I didn't need anything too complicated like a Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or even a digital timer because I really just want something that I can kind of turn on and set and then go and take Rocco for a walk or go and do some other things in the garden while the watering is kind of getting done for me. So that's why I opted for a manual timer. It was quite affordable and it also included a like two-way splitter so I can have my two main kind of like irrigation systems going at once or I can just have one of them going. Unless the parts of your garden that you're wanting to water are extremely close to your water source, you're going to want to use hoses or piping so that the water can travel from the water source out to the garden. So you could either use something simple like a garden hose or for a more advanced system, you'd look at something like PVC or poly piping. For me, it was just the hose. So the hose that I've been using and also another old hose that I had lying around. So I can put each of those hoses in my kind of two points of the tap and each of those hoses can then be taken to each of the parts of the garden that I want to water. So I'll have one primarily going to my water garden and also my uh, shade house, which has all of my things that are growing in pots. And the other one will go to my main garden bed. And finally, you're going to want a way for the water to actually get out of that hose or the piping and into the garden. So you'll need to select an irrigation method. This could be something like sprinklers or a drip irrigation system for a more advanced system. Or for a more simple system, you could look at soaker hoses or weeper hoses. 
So I opted for two different types of irrigation. The first one I'm using is soaker hoses. These are similar to, I think like kind of a sprinkler, but also kind of similar to like misting. I am going to be using those for my water garden and my two shade houses. And then I am going to be using a weeper hose for my main garden bed with my annuals and all of my vegetables that I'm growing. So I opted for these because they were the most affordable and also because they kind of suited the needs of each. So a weeper hose wouldn't be very good for uh, the pots or the water garden, especially because the water garden needs to have a lot of water not just like in the roots of the plants, but I need water to get into the little boggy area, into that soil. I need it to get into the actual pond and stuff like that. So that's why I went for the soaker hose. And that's also more suitable for all of the pots and things in the shade house. Knowing the flow rate is important when you're planning your irrigation system because it's going to help you determine the size and capacity of the system components, including the pipes, valves and emitters. So if the flow rate is too low, then the system might not be able to deliver enough water to meet the plant's needs. There might not be enough pressure to actually get the water to come out of all of the exit points. And this could result in poor growth and yield. If the flow rate is too high, then you might end up wasting water. It could lead to soil erosion or damaging your plants. If you fill a bucket with a known volume and time how long it takes to fill the bucket, you can calculate the flow rate. The flow rate is the volume of water divided by the time. For me, I filled an 8 litre bucket in 34 seconds. First, I need to convert the time from seconds to minutes by dividing it by 60 in order to get a calculation in litres per minute. 34 seconds divided by 60 is 0 0.57 minutes. So now I can substitute those values into the formula. 8 litres divided by 0 0.57 minutes gives me 14.04 litres per minute. Now, in order to get my flow rate per hour, I can times this by 60. So 14.04 litres per minute times 60 will give me 842.4 litres per hour. Different irrigation methods will also give me different flow rates. So knowing the flow rate can help me to determine exactly how long I'm going to run my irrigation system to provide the necessary water to my plants in each of my different sections. For a simple irrigation system like mine, where my water source has connected to a hose that's going to each of my garden points. I can then really simply connect a weeper hose or a soaker hose that will water my garden. But for a more complex system, using piping throughout the garden, you could connect sprinklers, a drip irrigation system, and you can customize the water points so that the water is gonna come out exactly where you need it to. So basically I have my water source which then has the timer and the adapter. I've connected two hoses. The hoses go to each of the sides of my garden. And then from there, I can connect the soaker hoses or the weeper hose and just let that system do its thing. So that's essentially my really simple irrigation system. It's nothing too complicated. It's nothing too expensive. It allows me to make sure that I am watering different areas appropriately. And it also means that I can kind of just set and forget while I go off and focus on other things. I don't really have a lot of time to spend in my garden, particularly during the week. I am a full-time PhD student. I'm trying to write my thesis. I am also studying a diploma. I run a social enterprise. I work, I do a lot of things. So as much as I would love to just spend hours a day in the garden, I don't have that kind of time. And having this irrigation system allows me to just kind of get back that time that I would normally spend standing around watering the garden and allows me to focus on other things so that I can be a lot more efficient and a lot more productive in my garden. So I hope that makes things a little bit easier to understand. Once you kind of understand that these are kind of like the four basic components of an irrigation system, you need a water source, you need a way to connect and control everything, you need a way to get the water to the actual gardens that you want to get the water in, and then you just need a way for the water to come out <laughs> of those um, hoses and pipes. It's really not that complicated. 
Uh, obviously on top of that, you can add fancier timers, you can use all of these additional things, but I think for the sake of this video and just kind of sharing the basics, that's really what kind of helped me to get my head around it. And I'm sure that as my permaculture journey progresses, I will no doubt add some more fancy things to my irrigation system, but for now it is perfect and it works perfectly.